Hey everybody! Today we're going to be making a watercolor coloring book. Here's an example of one that I've already done and what we'll be able to produce by the end of this video. I already cut up some Strathmore watercolor and cold press paper and the first image that you're going to see me do is going to be this uh, antique rose hero arts wood mounted stamp. It's a really pretty stamp. I think I got this from Joanne. I'm going to ink this up with Versafine. I like working with Versafine. I'm going to heat set all of these images after I put them after I put them down on the watercolor and paper. When you do this, you want to be very careful to ink this up very very well because with wood mounted with wood mounted stamps, you only get one chance. There is no re-inking this or there is no redoing this a second time unless you just really get that way, but I'm not I don't have that skill. So I like the way this came out. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this another time. <clears throat> Just making sure that I get this stamp inked up really, really well. Pressing it down really well because, like I said, you only get the one chance. And here we go. Now, wood mounted stamps, you know, I feel like you stamp per perfectly the first time every time with wood mounted stamps, anyway. It's, pro it's the rubber, probably, but that's just my opinion. Here we're going, uh, you can see my lilies, my lily stamp from Concord and Ninth. I'm going to stamp that one as well. I did have a little bit of difficulty stamping on this watercolor paper with this. I don't think it was, you know, I think it was just something that I was just going to have some difficulty with. What I did was I stamped this on something soft. Like I think I, I think I stamped it on my chair and it allowed me to bend the, the, the tonic studio the tonic studios Tim Holtz stamping platform just enough to get this in there but I think I stamped this three times three times before uh, before I realized that this just wasn't gonna work it did work I just had to do something different Oh, I bought out the Versamark because this was my first time using that stamp and I didn't want anything to not be stamped well. Using Versamark kind of, I, I guess in a way, pre-treats the stamp so that it picks up ink a little bit better later on when you want to use it. So you stamp it up with the Versamark and then wipe it off with your hands a little bit. And then you put your versa, uh, then you put your versifying up there, or any other ink that you want to put up there, and it should work well. It's never failed me. <coughs> See, this was the first time that I got this, and I wasn't sure what was going on. And I think, you know, in retrospect, it was probably just the stamping on the watercolor paper. You can see where I didn't get inside the grooves. So if you have this problem, either put something like a piece of felt or something, or like stamp on top of felt inside of the platform, or you can do what I did, which was just put it down on a soft, put the whole platform on a softer surface, and and then press down the, there. See, still not getting what I wanted. It was a little bit better that time, but the middle still wasn't working. I'm giving it my haul. And this still didn't work. I'm hard at it. I gotta try again. This is me putting it on the chair. I'm pressing it down. I bet you it works this time. There we go. Yeah, so just try that the next time. Alright, so my next image is going to be the dogwood flower from Cam and Chloe. I 
I mean, I know this is the dogwood because this is my state flower. I, I was thinking it was going to be on the side of the of the stamp, but it wasn't. And here you're going to see me ink this up really, really well because you only get the one chance. And image two is going down. All right, so this is going to be the fun part. Now, dogwoods can be uh, the dogwood side I like looking at a pink so with distress crayon I'm going on the bottom and I'm just gonna make a little pool of color for each color that I think uh, that I think I might like to watercolor and you know if you remember this is exactly what those like uh, paint by the number books when you were a kid used to do they had the they had the little number section for each part of the for each part of the image that they had and they gave you a color all the colors were at the you know bottom of the page or somewhere on the page so that you could just color however you wanted to so i'm hoping that this will work the same way actually i know it'll work the same way cuz i've already tried it and this works perfectly with distress crayon because distress crayons are actually, you know, they get a little dry when they're not used and if you wet them, the colors start moving again. I'm not sure that you could really do this with anything else. Like you might be able to put paint on a on the page. If anybody wants to try that and let me know. Yeah, let me know in the comments whether it works out for you. You know, when I had this idea, I was thinking this is a perfect way I could just share my distress crayons with other people and, you know, be able to watercolor. And I really put it on distress crayons for having me even try watercolor. Because it's not, it's not something that I really ever thought that I would do. And, you know, now that I've done it a couple of times, I, I kind of like it. Watercolor kind of makes you look like you're a really good artist. Like, I, you know... If you just put in a little bit of effort, I've never seen that, you know, your your image or that your painting comes out totally atrocious. You know, and you could get creative with these uh, with these little color pools at the bottom. You can I did flowers. I think on one of them, I'm going to do a different shape, or you could just go with the classic circles. You can't go wrong with circles. This is the lily, and you know, most of the time with the li lilies that I like looking at, they're like kind of white, or either at least like really light colored. So I'm going to give, I'm going to put, give this a couple different colors. So I'm, I'm gonna stick to the yellows and the greens. The greens just being for the stem. I think, uh, was it this is mowed lawn or either lucky clover? You know, you can make this as cute as you want it to be. The 
a big part why I wanted it, why you want to keep these at the bottom of the page is that after you're done watercoloring, you know, it's going to look all crazy and washed out. So you can just cut that out and use it and use the watercolor image however you want to use it. You can either cut it out, fussy cut it out and use it on a card, put it, uh, put it in a painting somewhere, you know, mount it or something if you want to. Get super creative with it. If you guys head over to my blog, I have a Pinterest board on this blog for the watercolor gift set where I'll have a whole bunch of watercolor inspiration for you guys. Hopefully, I want you to get to this board and get inspired to maybe make some of your own images and to see a couple of these that I've already done. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my very best to answer them. If you like what you see here today, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to receive notifications every time I post. I'll have a full list of supplies I use in this video on my blog and some more pictures of these lovely watercolor pages. As always, y'all, y'all have a really good day and make something that inspires you. Bye, y'all.